Hi. <laughs> Last one of the chapter. Yay! <laughs> Tissue repair. Not a whole lot about this one, um, so don't worry so much. The majority of the test is going to be on all the other stuff that we learned, not so much tissue repair, but I wanted to cover it because it has a lot to do with the connective tissue and the epithelial tissue and stuff. Okay, so tissue repair. So this is the last one, uh, 2-8, I believe. Gosh dang, pin. Work. Okay, um, so injury, you hurt yourself. You Here's your skin. You get a cut, a splinter, a bee sting, um, a knife wound, whatever and you get a cut on your skin, what's the first thing that happens? Well, the injury itself starts producing hormones that get sent out into the underlying blood vessels that are underneath it, and those hormones very quickly send messages to different parts of your body that it's time to go to work. And so, when they go to work, they're gonna do uh, two things. They're gonna do regeneration, oops, sorry. They're gonna do regeneration and fibrosis. Um, which type of re repair they do depends completely on how what tissue you damaged and how bad you damaged it. Regeneration is like a paper cut that when um, you get a little bitty cut and then after a week or so it is completely, uh, com I can't erase the little piece now, yay, completely gone. But fibrosis, that's and you get a big cut or a big injury and it leaves scars. So that's the main difference. Regeneration leaves no scars. Fibrosis does leave scars. All right, so what's the difference? Well, I kind of said it, but here it is so you can write it down. Regeneration is a replacement of destroyed tissue with the same kind of tissue. So usually involved in small cuts. So like this picture down here, he got a little pokey into his skin, a whole bunch of things happened, and now look at the skin, it looks totally the same. You can't tell anything happened. So that's regeneration. A lot of mitosis goes on in here because in mitosis you get replication of the cells and they just fill in the blank spot. But fibrosis, you replace the tissue not with the same type of epidermal cells, but with a fibrous tissue, uh, connective tissue, and then that re instead of being a nice, simple epithelial, now we've got connective tissue in there that kind of fills things up and makes it all thick and nasty. And so that gives you the big old scars. Okay, so let's start with the first step of injury. The first step, so here's my finger. Oh no, I got a cut in my finger. What's going to happen? Okay, it looks like a hot dog. I'm going to bleed to death. Oh, no. Okay, that's a knuckle, although it looks like a gross-looking hot dog. But anyway, so I cut myself. Oh, no. What's going to happen? Well, I'm going to bleed, bleed, bleed. That's one of the first things. Bleeding actually uh, releases it gets rid of a lot of the bacteria because the dirt and germs will get carried away with the blood. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so the injured cells are going to release inflammatory chemicals. So all these cells are starting to send out a distress signal saying, ouch, 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 I hurt, I'm hurt. And so you've got blood vessels underneath that are going to pick up that signal and then deliver it to your brain. Your brain goes, up. Oh, okay, time to send reinforcements. So the capillary which, as you remember, are um, little single uh, vessels that only allow one cell at a time, they start getting bigger. So now more blood can come through at the, at the same time. So capillaries dilate and they become permeable to white blood cells. White blood cells, remember, are the little uh, guys that are able to move around. So they can, so they're normally floating around in your bloodstream, but now they're able to leak out. They can come out through the capillary vessels and then they can get to where they need to go and start cl the cleanup mess. So they can clean up all the bacteria, viruses, whatever's in there. Then little proteins, clotting proteins, uh, also leak out and they get on the scene and then they start to make a clot. They spin, they're kind of like little spider men. They, th they spin little webs that traps blood cells and just like a spider catching a bug in its web, the web of the proteins catches um, particles and blood cells and that helps to make a clot. What the clot does is helps to one, hold the edges together. So if here it is, then um, you're going to make a little spider web like that. That's going to hold the two edges together. And then it's also going to keep the germs in this area because we don't want those germs spreading out because then you can get an infection in various other parts of your body. We don't like that. That's bad. Okay, the second step is I have another page for the same thing. That's very strange. Well, here's a Valony dropped something. Here's a picture showing the same thing. I don't know why I have two pages for the same one. But here's your blood vessel. 
uh, the capillary that's now big enough and because usually remember only one cell can fit through at a time so now it's big enough other cells can fit through here's my white blood cell coming out fancy name leukocyte just means white blood cell so he shows up and he starts to uh, destroy the bacteria which are the little green pickle looking things right here here's my clot here's the area of inflammation so it usually tries to isolate itself so it doesn't affect any other parts of your tissues and then these are little cytokines which are just chemical um, that chemicals that kind of communicate to each other okay step two is called organization organization restores blood cells and what that does is it just kind of starts putting things back in order the blood clot is going to be replaced by granulation tissue <laughs> valeny can't walk at all bye so granulation tissue is uh, a delicate pink tissue that makes new capillaries so where because if you have a capillary this is a capillary here's the top of your skin and if the cut goes deep enough well that's gonna block the bl uh, flow of blood through here so the granulation tissue is gonna come in there and they're gonna clean things up I really wish the eraser on this thing actually worked that would ugh, sorry so anyway as I was attempting to say so here's a little blood vessel that got cut off so the granulation tissue as it fills up this little area is gonna start to make new blood vessels to reconnect it. it's like reconnecting the pipes and then we're also gonna have fibroblasts and collagen which are also gonna come in here and start laying down the foundation for your tissue again so basically trying to put everything back together or organizing it it's organizing it back to normal then macrophages are going to come in and they're kind of like the um, trash men they or the janitors they come in and clean up all the leftovers so they start to eat the blood clot that was there and as they eat it it slowly disappears and goes back to normal and then uh, it fills it in with scar tissue so I still got blood flow through there but now I've got scar tissue as well which makes it a little bit tougher because now this area is able to withstand more tensile pressure than if I were to um, just heal it with regular skin that scar tissue helps to make it stronger that's why it's kind of hard to cut through a scar this is just a picture of granulation tissue you can see lots of fibroblasts in there that are uh, starting to lay down the groundwork or all the different types of cells all right and the last step number three is to finish it off with either regeneration or fibrosis and that'll determine what you get a nice little scar or no scar the surface epithelium so your simple squamous not simple squamous sorry stratified squamous is going to come in and kind of cover up the top that pops off the scab and then underneath you should have either a nice soft pink area like this which is scar tissue um, or it'll be completely closed and it'll look like nothing has happened so usually in surgeries things like that we always end up with um, the fibrosis we end up with scars you can even see each of the little holes where the stitches were poked through so that each of those little puncture wounds so you can see where the edges of the wound were and so this is all new tissue that was not there before so what before this side and this side were stuck to each other but now they're not okay last slide is just a picture kind of showing the process all over again is that here's the initial injury and so here's the blood and then if you look right here neutrophils which is just a different type of white blood cell we got blood cells leaking and then uh, all of a sudden hormones are going to be released that says ow 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 we're in danger that's going to dilate the blood vessel that's going to let uh, white blood cells come through and start working on the area and killing all the bacteria over here we can see that the capillary was cut in half no big deal it will be fixed we can see lots of different types of cells we have a budding capillary so these two sides are going to grow back together and connect it we've got area of granulation tissue so that's just the area of new growth fibroblasts are in there laying down new um, tissue underneath regeneration of epithelium so we got mitosis is going on right here to replace the cells here's a gross little scab on top and then eventually once you get enough epithelial tissue scab pops off and then ta-da your skin looks good you've got some reinforced area the fibrosis area right here we've got our capillary is back to normal everything's hunky-dory and we either end up with a scar or we look completely normal again so not a whole lot about that 
you know, just know the difference between fibrosis and regeneration. Just know the basics that um, granulation tissue, that's another good one to know. Um, but just know that it occurs in three steps. You got the injury, hormones are released, everybody shows up on the scene, blood clots, scabs, macrophages, and then eventually it's you either are left with a scar or it looks completely normal. Okay, like I said, I'm not going to ask you a whole lot of questions about this just because it was so late in the unit and um, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> unless you're the one being operated on and have the cut and you want to know how it's going to heal. All right, so that's it. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.